Good morning, gardeners. Welcome to Get Your Wellies. I'm sitting here under the shade cloth. We're about to inspect some of the tomato plants. I've seen a few telltale signs of some trouble, so I wanted to share that with you in this video. So why don't you get your wellies, meet me in the garden. All right, gardeners, so here we are taking a look at the new tomato plants. I took a lot of the old ones out just because they looked so terrible and replaced these. These have been in here for four weeks. When I put them in, they were very tiny. I'm gonna try and put an insert in, but they were very small when I put them in. Now this is a variety, determinate variety called Nebraska Wedding. I, that name is just so appealing to me. It's just a, a, a very pretty name. And this plant is very healthy. I am looking at these really quick because I know that we do have some problems on some of my other tomato plants. And I just wanted to show you what a healthy one looks like. The only exception, these bottom leaves, and that's probably just getting a little bit of splash water on there. But... I'm actually gonna put some um, straw in here today. But these plants that were so tiny, you give them just a few weeks of, of growth and they're, they're doing great. Now, I took some film the other day when I was out here um, because I saw some problems and I, I'll include that short video too. But um, I, I actually came back last night and found another hornworm on actually it was this plant so here if you look at it this is this is what you're looking for you're looking for leaf damage however this could be some other kind of caterpillar um there are some other ones that could affect it the the biggest telltale sign to me is this when you see um stalks that are just absolutely stripped of of all foliage that's kind of a telltale sign you got an un uninvited guest here, uh, at least one of them. So I took two off the other day, I'll show you that little clip. And then um, I took another one off last night. Further examination of this plant, I did not find any more. During the daytime, if you come out during the day to look for them, they're gonna be harder to find, especially when they're small, but even when they're big, it's, it's crazy how they blend right in with with the tomato plant they just they just have an incredible natural camouflage um so i think i've got them all off of this plant um there's another one here this variety is is kind of more of a potato leaf variety of tomato it's also a determinant I got seeds for the Nebraska wedding and this one, which is the Black Sea Man. Um, it's from Russia and it's actually starting to put some flowers on at the top, which is great. Um, but I'm going to have to keep a close eye on this uh, for pests. Now, this one, you know, I'm seeing some holes kind of lacy looking. And when you see chewing between the veins of the leaves, that's quite possibly some other, well, look at that. That is some kind of other caterpillar. Almost looks like a, a cabbage looper or something along those lines. But I don't exactly know what that is. So. If any of you know what kind of caterpillar, let's see, it's so bright out here, I'm having trouble, let's see, I'm having trouble getting focused in on anything. Um, but if, you, if anybody knows what this is, just let me know. But here's what, here's what I think this is sort of telling me I need to do, I'm gonna squish him. And I, I think once you start seeing a lot of caterpillars or several different kinds, the best thing to do is to treat that. And I will um, show you what we're gonna use on that. And we'll do that at the end of this video. Um, 
so that's kind of where we are with those plants. The others are all looking good. So I have nine tomato plants, which uh, other than keeping a close watch on them, um, they're doing really well. Um, you'll be able to see on the clip that follows that the hornworms I found were pretty small, an inch and a half. I mean, really not much more than that. Um, so they they can do quite a bit of damage, but they will get to sometimes five inches long and they are just an eating machine. So they will plow through, they could defoliate this size of a plant basically overnight. So you need to keep a watch out for them. And it's just part of, as you grow as a gardener, you get very used to just glancing at things and you'll see something that, that and you'll just know it's not right. And if you get that kind of feeling, you just need to go check it out and see what's going on with, you, with your plants. So um, the other thing that I will show you at the end is uh, with some of the other things we're gonna talk about is um, if you've never used a black light at nighttime to come look for them, that makes that makes all the difference in the world it's like all their camouflage disappears and now they they glow like the fourth of july or something when you shine that black light on them so it's a great tool to find them um as long as you don't mind coming out in the dark to investigate everything but um let's take a look at the video that i shot the other day um and you can kind of see what what i'm talking about so guys, I'm out here this morning just checking on these tomato plants, which look basically healthy, but there's some something eaten here, some holes in this leaf, and the telltale sign of our little troublemaker here is these stems right here where there's no leaves at all. This kind of chewing is very typical of the tomato hornworm. Now, they're easier to find at nighttime with a black light, but this plant is not big, so I'm gonna have a little look, and you most likely, during the daytime, you're gonna find these little things under the leaves. Well, look what we got right there. So there's one, and if you if you have chickens, your chickens will really appreciate hornworms. I don't. I just snip them, cut them in half, and I let the birds come get them. And once I leave the garden, the birds will come down and and eat that. And let's look around, make sure we don't have. Well, look, there's one right there. Yeah, we're just having all kinds of activity on this plant. For a small plant, these things can get really big and this little plant would be gone overnight if there was a big one on there. Come on off you little beggar. So, get him off. Really, I just prefer to have a pair of gloves on and just pull them off, but he'll come off. They are kind of gross. There's two of them down there. So let's just have a look and see if we have any more. Nope. Nope. And you'll tend to find they're gonna be hidden up under the leaves during the day when it's hot. And at nighttime, they usually kind of like to go higher on the plant. That appears to be it for right now, as far as I can see. Anyway, it's, it honestly, guys, it's much easier at night. These little things grow incredibly fast um so definitely you want to be looking for these and since we've had them on this plant now i feel the need to check all the others so let's have a look 
Now, if you look around on this plant, I actually don't really see any damage on this one. Not yet. This one looks to be okay. Let's just double check on a few of these. Yeah, this one looks okay. And this is a real small one down here. You know, there's lots of things that are supposed to deter these things. And these are the first hornworms I've seen this year. But I've got marigolds in here with some of these plants right over here. But, you know, nothing's 100%. So I've had borage growing in here in years past and I still would occasionally get them. So not there's nothing that's 100%. You just gotta look and if you see that damage, you can spray with BT if you want to. Or I just come and hand pick them off, but I don't have tons of tomato plants either. So anyway, that's just a kinda interesting thing. Saw those, thought I might record that for you so you could tell what you're looking for. So here we are a couple days later, evidence, this is the same plant, more holes. And if you look closely on this leaf, you can see these black specks. This is the frass or the excrement from the hornworm. And he basically is eating and pooping almost continuously. And some of you might've seen him when I just went past with the camera, there he is. Having a little trouble getting the camera to focus here. Let's see. There he is. So I'm just gonna pull him off. There he is down there. So this product here is called Bacillus thuringiensis. It is a, typically you refer to that just as BT. It's a pretty difficult word to pronounce. Um, but it is actually a kind of an enzyme that occurs in nature. It's it's considered to be a, a natural product. Um, so you can buy it in a ready-made version. That's a little more expensive that way. This little bottle, um, I don't have a ton of tomatoes. I suppose if you had rows and rows of tomatoes, you might want to mix up big gallon amounts and spray them all. But for me, the spray bottle is perfectly adequate. And this is a quart, so it took three 0.75 mils of BT to make up a quart of spray. So I'm just gonna go over there now, so make sure you shake it up good and spray these tomatoes. Um, we're under the shade cloth, so even though it's kind of bright out here, um, I'm just gonna do a very light coating. Normally, probably better, if you're in full sun, probably better not to do it this time of day. Um, it's kind of warm, but uh, I'm going to do it real quick and I just don't want these caterpillars to get out of control. So um, I'll be back with you in a minute. So I hope that helps when you're checking your plants. Uh, remember the main things, you're looking for stripped leaves, uh, especially if there's small stems that are all the way stripped, very suspicious. You also will sometimes see 
black specks all over the leaves and that's the droppings. The bigger those hornworms get, the more of those you're gonna see. And if any of you are familiar with what borage seeds look like, I actually got confused between hornworm droppings and borage seeds one year um, because they look so similar if they're coming off a big worm. So anyway, that's just a little tip. Also, um, another thing I was gonna include some footage I got in my garden at the beginning of the season. It was at dusk and I got uh, some video footage of a hummingbird moth. Now, you will hear some people say that the tomato hornworm is the um, uh, caterpillar for the hummingbird moth. That is actually not true. Um, it, but for some reason, a lot of people seem to hold to that. Um, it is a similar looking caterpillar, but it actually doesn't eat tomatoes at all. The hornworm um, gets really big. If allowed to get to a um, full size, it'll be five inches long or so. And then they're gonna burrow down in the ground and um, pupate and they will come out and they become the sphinx moth, which is a pretty impressive big moth if you ever see those. They fly around at night. Um, you can try some distracting plants, although nothing really works perfectly in my opinion. As you can see, I've got marigolds, marigolds here and that, they don't really help. Um, probably borage helps some, I think. I saw less tomato hornworms when I had borage, but I've seen people have tomato hornworms on their tomatoes with borage planted right next to it. So I don't really think that's 100%. Probably if you, were to say to me, can you give me one plant that really helps keep hornworms away? I would say basil. And that's because tomatoes have a very distinct smell and it's quite powerful. Um, but if you put basil next to it, you're gonna smell that basil over the tomato uh, plant. So uh, I really think it helps to confuse the moths and they just go look for some easier target. Um, remember to keep a lookout if you have peppers, eggplants, um, sweet potatoes, pretty much anything in the nightshade family is, is vulnerable to the tomato hornworm. But the tomato is, is their favorite. If you got those, that's the most likely place they're going to be. But you can definitely see them on peppers. Last year I had them exclusively on pepper plants, but I still only saw three the whole season. So just something to hopefully help you in the garden. Um, if you're new to gardening, this may be the first time you ever see one. Um, so be looking for them. They, they are a fascinating, but quite devastating, uh, uninvited guest to the garden for sure. Um, if you've been doing gardening for a while, you're very familiar with these things. And uh, if you have any extra tips, you can leave those in the comments below. Some of the other uh, readers, uh, it may help them. And to be honest, I'm always open to new ideas too. So uh, I might enjoy that too. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoy the footage of the um, hummingbird moth that I'm going to put on here uh, for the end of the video. So thank you all. Until I see you next time, have a great rest of the day. Bye now.